I regularly get asked how much more expensive insurances are for an EV compared to those for a petrol car. Some will say, oh, I hear it's double the price. And this question is fueled by mainstream newspaper, even those I normally consider as trustworthy, such as The Guardian. So recently there was an article which I was really not impressed with, given the clickbait title of Quotes were £5,000 or more. Electric vehicle owners face soaring insurance costs. Clearly, the UK is seeing about 10% inflation in the last year on its consumer price index. And that means there is a substantial path through onto car insurance premiums. But is it, as the article suggests, 72% and £400 more for an EV? 29% more or £192 for a nice car. By the way, these numbers are insane. They say that the average quote is the best part of a thousand pounds for the average car in the UK. I mean, is that really what people are paying for their car insurance premium? So I know it's not my experience. I did have to shop around this year and I had to switch. It was the first time in 10 years. But today I'd like to check what kind of truth there may be behind the statement that insurers don't know what to do with EVs and therefore charge massively more. We are going to compare 10 EVs with 10 ICE cars that are what I'd consider their most similar counterparts. So similar use price, same or similar age, similar mileage, when possible similar brand and even better when possible similar model one electric one petrol we then run through go compare for quotes and make a note of the cheapest offer the average of the lowest 10 price points and we then arbitrarily check one insurer which is darwin and there's no particular reason for that except that's the one i'm using at the minute having had to drop aviva who was not competitive this year we're going to have a look at those pairs of cars one by one and then I'll summarize all of that in a table with all the numbers. First, we play a BMW i3 versus a Mini, both at about £10,000, both fun, agile, owned by BMW and of a reasonable premium. So if you look at the quotes, the i3 comes in at about £60 more on the minimum price and the average price point for the first 10 quotes is indeed a bit higher as well. Let's take a look at the summary table. £57 on the lowest insurance price. £105 more for the i3 on the average of the lowest 10 insurance prices. And 52 on Darwin. So that means on average it is 25% more for the electric version of the fun German car. But you may pay only 10 to 15% if you're looking around. Still at the £10,000 mark, we now play a Nissan Leaf versus a Nissan Pulsar. The cheapest insurer is in fact £3 lower and it's the same as the one for the ICE car. However, in the top 10, it is true that the prices go up faster on the electric car. Summary table for the Nissan cars. £3 cheaper on the lowest insurance. £68 more on the average of the lowest 10. And then if you pick Darwin, you're looking at £128 more. So on average, 14% more for the choice of the 10 cheapest. All right, you get the game now. So we carry on. We compare an e-golf with a golf. An Ionic 38 kilowatt hours with an Ionic hybrid. A Peugeot E2008 with a 2008. And actually, a byproduct of this research is that we find quite a few cars now that you can buy used 
either in their petrol or their electric version for about the same price at the same age. That's quite impressive. We have a Kia Enero playing a Nero. And finally, we've got a Model 3 from Tesla playing a BMW Series 3. All right, so let's look at all the results in one go. We've already done the BMW i3 plays the Mini and the Nissan Leaf plays the Pulsar. If we then look at the UP versus E-UP, you can see these are very reasonable, affordable insurance prices, about the 300, 350 pounds mark. But the fact is that the E-UP is 80 pounds more, 27% on such a small premium. And, and therefore more expensive. On the e-golf versus the golf, you're looking at about 110 pounds more, and that's a 27 to 30% more. We then get to the Ionic, and the electric version is 60 pounds cheaper on the cheapest insurance, and 30 pounds cheaper on the average of the top 10. So still 5% better. So that's the first one that's like that. On the E2008, it's very, very similar, you know, eight pounds more on the lowest insurance price and 40 pounds on the top 10. That's a 9% difference. The ID3 is slightly more expensive at 35 pounds more for the cheapest insurance compared to the Golf and about 100 pounds more when it comes to the top 10. The Enero is about the same price as the Nero Hybrid when it comes to the cheapest insurance, but you get £130 more on the top 10, so 23% more. And finally, the Tesla Model 3 is about £100 more than the Series 3 when it comes to insurance, whether it be on the best price or on the average of the lowest 10 insurance prices. Now, final recap for the 10 EVs versus the 10 petrol cars. The lowest insurance price is around the 450 pounds mark on average across those cars that costed somewhere between 10,000 pounds and 25,000 pounds in the used market. If you're buying the electric version, you're about 40 pounds more in terms of how much you're going to pay the insurance. So that's 9%. So it's a bit more, but it's certainly not double the price and it's not hundreds of pounds either. For the top 10 insurance prices that you would get, on average, you would be paying 80 pounds more and that's a 16% increase on an average of about 500 pounds in the first place. Final point is that it pays to look around and switch because you can see that when looking at just the one insurer, this is where the difference can be the highest. In conclusion, is it more expensive? Yes, a little bit, but not very much, more like 10, 15% and less than 100 pounds on what is a 500 pound premium as an average. So the numbers are very, very different to a title that starts with, he paid 5,000 pounds. And that's the conclusion for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe as always. Thank you.